Good morning, everybody. It's Positive Tuesday today, May 30th, 2023. For Baron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you're watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With 20 years of experience, this locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the outside and on the inside of your home or business. Give them a call today because just like Fitzy and I, they believe it's the little things that make a big difference. The number's right there on the screen, 715-520-2271. Today is, I'm not making this up, today is <laughs> National Fakes Giving Day today. Fitzy, what are you fakes full for? Fake? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't even really understand what it means. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Even, I was reading your definition here, and I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I send that to you for reference. Thanksgiving celebrated on May 30 this year is a holiday celebrated either to honor the fact that family and friends can be celebrated at any random time, or a sarcastic version of the Thanksgiving holiday. I don't fully understand what it means. Well, we don't have to celebrate that one today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Well, obviously. So, thank you for first of all being on this morning. There was. I think we let, uh, left off last week's show at the end. We were talking about Memorial Weekend coming up and all this stuff. And you said, hopefully, uh, by next week's show, today, no press releases will have been sent out because that means it was a safe uh, and a happy ho uh, not holiday. Uh, uh, everyone was safe. No press release from the sheriff's office. That's a good week at the Barron County Sheriff's Office. Unfortunately, I get up, you know, this morning at four and I see uh, a press release from you at 1215. So yeah. thanks for being on. First of all, for the fact you must not have had a whole lot of sleep. We can get into that here in a little bit. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a little heavy there, but, you know, it is what it is. Right. But to kind of start the show light, as always, uh, let's do our sports questions. OK, so I'll, ha I'll go first. So, obviously, last night was the Game 7 of the Eastern Con Conference Finals. Miami was up 3 to none. You had them winning. I had Boston winning the series. Yep. Be honest. Yep. After they went up 3 nothing, and the Celtics came back and they tied it, won three games in a row, who did you actually think was going to win that game last night in Boston? Did you still think Miami was going to? Oh, hang on. I'm trying to fix this. I'm going to get a lot of those today. Um, do I think – I? Did you think they were going to before the game started? I was hoping. I, I mean, I kind of thought they were going to. You're just picking up and going. hanging up? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't you have a volume thing on it or something? I do. That's what I thought I hit. But anyway, oh. I thought Boston – I mean, I was surprised Boston came back. I didn't think Miami played well, but I, I felt Miami was going to win. I picked Miami to win. I was sticking with Miami. I, I don't. I'm gonna stick with Miami. I don't think they can beat Denver, but I'm hoping they can because I want Miami and Florida Panthers to win it all from two Metro teams. So really close to each other, and I want them. So why Florida? Uh, why Florida? Florida Panthers are in the yeah. The, but why? Why is that one of your, your favorite teams, right or you just want them to win? No, I just want them to win. Now I just think it'd be cool if this two two teams, one that were really close to each other. That would be kind of cool. Good for Florida. Yeah. They need some positive news right now. <laughs> that, what a dumpster fire. <laughs> that whole state. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. I actually had uh, the Celtics winning it, but as you and I have talked before, Celtics live and die on three-pointers, and they shot nine right. for 42. They shot more three-pointers. Now they're behind most of the game, but more three-pointers than two-pointers last night, and they shot nine for 42. That's 21%. Yeah, I didn't get to watch it, so I don't really know um, because obviously we were at this crash, but I kept getting my score updates on my phone um, in between when I could get a signal. So. Yeah, because you just need to have uh, you know a mental break there. And, and good morning, by the way, the people that are saying good morning. Um, Mike, obviously, he's uh, Golden he Knights. Yeah. Um, you know, I get it, Las Vegas, but they've been in it, I think, what they've been in existence for five years, and I think they've they haven't been earned it 20. yet. Yeah. yeah, but they've been in it. Um, so I mean, Stanley Cup Finals—that's great. Um, I just—I'll just go with Florida. Okay, let's go with the underdogs. Let's do it. Okay, underdog way. All right. So, who do you think? Um, you know, Denver obviously is going to take on Miami now. What? Who do you pick for there? Who do you, who do you got I, I, now? See, I don't know if I – I mean, it's a seven-game series. 
Right. So, and I don't think it'll be over. No, it won't be over by next week. So I don't know if we. Uh, I don't know. It, it's uh, does Miami have to win a, the, one of those first two games in Denver in order to win this series? Because Denver has home court advantage. If Denver right. wins the first two. Is it over? Or like most people say in basketball, it's never really a series until you win on the other team's court. But if Miami can split it 1-1, I, th- I think they have to, right? I, I think I don't know if they can go down 2 to nothing and, and win. I, I don't see it. Do you it. think the rest helps them or hurts them? I mean, they've been off seven days. This is the I second know. longest rest between series. Uh, Miami's hot, but they're, maybe they're tired. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they should play it so fast. I mean, you look at the NHL, they don't play their first game till Saturday. They're giving some teams some time off. And I don't I don't think Miami should have to play right away. I think it, when is the first game? game? Well, Thursday uh Wednesday no, when, Thursday is the first uh okay. playoff game for basketball and Saturday is the first playoff game for hockey. So Wow, yeah, that is weird. They should get a little more time off. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I think Miami has to win one of these games in Denver. Uh if they don't. I, I don't know. They'll be okay. Yeah. All right. So, obviously, we have some heavy stuff to get to. There was a press release sent out. The headline was tragic. Or this is our headline. Tragic crash claims lives of two, leaves several injured in Barron County. We also have um, an article, jury returns verdict for man charged with multiple sex crimes against children. You had a canine and an officer, I think, that graduated for something. We want to get into that. Uh, we'll do all that in 15 seconds after a word from Spooner Health satisfaction surveys and in conversations with patients, they appreciate the fact that staff got to know them. Staff really took their preferences into account and they just feel grateful that they are being cared for as a person. To learn more about our services, visit SpoonerHealth.com. All right. So unfortunately, there was a a fatality, uh, two of them, I believe, in that crash uh, last night. Walk us through this. What I mean from, you know, you get that first call. It's on a, a Monday night. Are you at home? Yeah, just sat down, um, working all day, um, just outside, you know, enjoying the weather like everybody else was enjoying the weather all weekend and and uh, putting the garage back together after graduation party and congratulations to all the graduates. Graduation was beautiful Friday night. The weather was awesome all weekend. Um, but as I was driving in, listening to the radio this morning and there was uh, multiple fatalities across multiple counties this weekend, traffic mm-hmm. crashes um you know highlighted the news and and you know we do have some good news and we always try to highlight good news but yeah last night uh, as i'm sitting down gonna eat some uh hot dogs and some potato salad what else do you do on memorial day right so oh. um and uh, i got a call um and saw that there was a, a major crash in the county um and it was a two vehicle crash just so it would be south of Barron and north of Ridgeland uh, down on high, right on highway 25 um, you know and that's a, a busy road already um, and so we had uh, there was 14 people hurt in this crash um, and uh, two fatalities as of now you know we had nine ambulances four helicopters multiple uh, two fire departments, the DNR, state patrol, multiple state patrol agencies. The Wisconsin State Patrol is, I mean, they're just awesome. I mean, I just, they reconned it. We got, we got the road back open. I mean, they helped us whenever we needed the Wisconsin State Patrol's there. I mean, it was, it was probably one of the, I don't want to say worst crashes, but it was the chaoticness of the scene. I don't know. It was just, 14 people heard i, I mean yeah, hold on a second so for people who have not read that article or that press release i'm sure you put it on your page too we put it up this right. morning but some people may just be kind of slowly getting up and getting going and are unfamiliar with what this what happened so you're saying there was a two vehicle crash but 14 people were involved so right. well, we probably a van in a car um a van is traveling um north on 25 the car, um, you know, I, I'm not getting into the cause of it right now. The state patrol is determining the cause. Um, there's a stop sign involved. They collide, um, and um, and the van rolls over. The car goes into the ditch. The van actually starts on fire um, during this. So now we've got a fire. We've got a car with four people in it. And we've got a van with nine people or uh, ten people in it. So we have 14 people injured. Uh, when oh, the, so it was like a conversion van, ten yeah, people. Yeah, it was a large, like a sixteen passenger van, one of those big, sure. bigger vans. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so, 
ultimately when we get a call like that, you know, some people say, you know, it's a two vehicle crash. And so you send an ambulance and you send a fire department and you send the police. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, then, this happens often. Right. And, but as more information, we're like, oh no, there was, there was multiple people in the van. So you send a second ambulance. And then when our people get on scene and it's on fire and there's multiple, multiple people. So then we used, we used, you know, I've never been to a scene that had nine ambulances. I don't even know if the tornado when that happened, if we had nine ambulances. That Where do you, you know, get all these? Uh, I mean, yeah. you don't have that many ambulances in Paris. So they must have come from, you know, everywhere. Well, there was two from Marshfield. There was a Mayo ambulance. There was a Cumberland ambulance, the Steck ambulance, the Dallas ambulance. That's all of the ambulances we have in Bern County. Then we had the Colfax ambulance. We had the Clear Lake ambulance, the Boyceville ambulance. I mean, Boy. we were talking... Yeah, and I think we had two Boysville ambulances, actually. I think my press release said so. We're, then we might have had 10 ambulances. Um, you know, when you think about that, 10 ambulances, 14 people, that's not even enough yet, you know? Um, you know, right. normally an ambulance, one person, one ambulance, I mean, that's what you try to do because you got to get care. You only have two ambulance, two medical people in the ambulance, so you've got to get care to these people. Now we have 14 people. We had one deceased, one died, a second person died at the scene. We had to, we landed four helicopters in a field. Uh, I mean, I've never, I didn't even know we had that many helicopters. We had three lifelink helicopters and the North Memorial helicopter all landed on the scene. And we threw, we flew three people out. Um, yeah, the driver critical. of the van was 54. I'm reading this right off of your press release on yeah. uh, two 17 year old males. Um, yeah. were flown uh, from the scene in critical condition. It's very early still. Right. Uh, do you have any update on this, the no, status of that? Okay. I don't. Oh. Um, that, but they are they are critical. Um, and so, you know, we don't have, you know, thank, thank God we don't have a lot of fatalities in Barron County. Once in a while, we you know, we have these, a double is, you know, we rarely and now this one could be actually you know you could have it, yeah you could have could be multiple people. yeah yeah there could be you know and it was just it was chaotic i mean the firemen are trying to put a fire out then the grass started on fire because it's so dry and then a power pole started on fire i mean you got all of this is going on while you're trying to help 14 people that are injured yeah. at the same time um, you know, uh, and it says here also a deputy was also transported, treated, and released at an area hospital with smoke inhalation as van, as a van started on fire after the crash. How was the right. uh, obviously already released, but how was the deputy? Uh, yeah, the deputy is released. Um, had to spend a couple hours in the hospital. Um, she is home recovering um, at at this time. But uh, what happened there is the van was on fire, and there was a a person that was unconscious outside the van. And the van was obviously on fire with grass. <clears throat> the fire was spreading very quickly uh, towards him. And she had to actually drag him uh, away from the fire. Um, he ultimately later died, but she didn't know that at the time. Yeah. We'd just go into rescue mode. <clears throat> and, you know, we had to get the people away from the burning van. We didn't know if it was going to explode. We didn't know, how, you know, it was a, a, a just chaotic scene. I, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. Um, but our deputy's doing great. I mean, obviously, that's what our deputies do is risk their lives to save others. Yeah. And that's what she did is, is jumped right in there and said, I don't know, it's hot. Um, but she inhaled a lot of smoke and was coughing. And so we had her checked out and ultimately transported to the hospital. Um, we went to multiple hospitals. And again, you're talking about ambulances, but all these people got to go to a hospital. So we're talking, we were in Menominee. We were in Barron. I think we were in Rice Lake. I mean, we were at multiple, multiple hospitals that needs staff too. So, um, so that's, uh, just and those to, families to have right. l losing a loved one. There's never a good time, you know, to have a tragic, a tragedy and a death never, mm -hmm. but I've always, for some weird reason, and maybe this is morose, but having a loved one die on a holiday, just, I feel like that's somehow worse. Now it isn't because a death is a death. Right. A tragedy is a tragedy. But now, like every Memorial Day, it's just for that family. Right. You can't really celebrate or, or what the Memorial Day is originally meant for. Of course, uh, our veterans and our fallen. Uh, you can't even really enjoy that. Enjoy is in, uh, uh, um, do they really go out and go to these services? Because they're mourning. Uh, last year on Memorial Day, my son died or my uncle died or my, I, I just, 
I know it's dumb, but I feel like it's worse when it's on a holiday. Just because well, now you have to like relive that every holiday. Well, and you try to celebrate holidays in a positive way. Like, right. And you just can't now. And, and the more tragic part that many people don't know yet is the four people in the car were all related. So, and they were all kids and the, and they were, I don't know where they were coming from or where they were going to. They were, none of them, none of the families were from Barron County. I was going to ask um, if that was all right to, they, well, basically ask you that. Are they from the area? Not that it makes it better or worse. Right. No. So, um, but their family, other families showed up. So my guess is they were coming to or from a cabin or a vacation, or I don't know what the story is. I don't know the backstory, but other family rolled up on scene. Um, you know, probably a half hour after the crash or so. Um, and so we had to deal with that as you're also trying to deal with this. And, um, and so, you know, I felt bad for those parents having to choose which hospital they go to, to be with their son or daughter or son, I should say no daughter, um, sons. Um, and that's just tragic. And then, and then one dies and, and it's just, yeah, and it it's said terrible. here to it's, people who don't know, a 54-year-old male in the van and a 13-year-old male in the car passed away from injuries. So it was a 13-year-old. Right. Yeah. I mean, my goodness gracious. Yeah, and there was uh, two 17-year-olds were flowing. The, one, the van driver was 54. He was flowing. Um, yeah, it's just – and the, I just can't – I think somebody put it on there, the first responders. Th- I mean, they were – they were rock solid. And, and we've said that thousands of times on this show, how great the first responders are in Barron County, the firemen, the ambulance people. I mean, the hospital people, you know, these are the people that don't get the holiday off um, because we need them. And we sure needed them all last night. Uh, and like I said, I, I talked to our dispatchers this morning. I mean, they had never dispatched that many ambulances to a scene. They were calling other counties saying, hey, get us more ambulances. Oh, my goodness. I never even thought about the dispatchers who have to coordinate yeah. all of these ambulances. Yeah. And, oh, my goodness. Right. And so, I mean, it's just, it, you know, it's teamwork. You know, it makes the dream work. I mean, it, it's truly what it Don't is. <laughs> and I, I've said that a lot. I mean, <laughs> on, you know, it's just, it's just, they're awesome. I mean, I can't say it enough. And it's tragic. Our yeah. thoughts and prayers are with the family, of yes. course, but we have to think about our first responders, our, our dispatchers, our ambulance, our, our firefighters, our, our helicopter people. I mean, without, I mean, think about that. We had four helicopters landed in a, fo- in a farmer's field. Um, the neighbors that came out and just brought water and said, what can we do? And blankets and pillows and, you know, and that's the stuff you don't think about. Oh, this is, you know, my good blanket because you're going to get blood on it. And that just goes out the and, window when something like this happens. And it's, that sounds silly, but it isn't. That totally right. isn't silly. Right. Just thinking about something small like that, a blanket <laughs> that uh, this, you know, maybe was passed down and, or my grandmother made this. <laughs> that never enters your mind. At least yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Grab and they, go. Right. Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, the neighbors are awesome. Um, you know, like I said, our deputy will be fine. The Wisconsin State Patrol is reconning it. The Wisconsin State Patrol is, is, has it. You know, a lot of people are going to ask, you know, the van was an Amish uh, Amish family um, in the van. Um, so we're, we're working um, oh, with, sure. with them on that. Um, so uh, so the ages were from 8 to 54 in the van. If you can, you know, now we have little kids. Um, the, the dad is the one that passed away oh, in the crash, God. you know. So it's just – it. You know, and and then a thirteen year old dies in the middle, and you're trying to comfort this family, and you got another family over here, um, and everybody's on scene. Everybody's, you know, you go to these scenes, and a lot of times you don't have the family isn't there, so you don't have that secondary thing. I mean, my captain was there with me, and we're strictly basically dealing with families here that are upset, crying, hurt at the same time and don't know which way to usually you can just call a parent and say, Hey, sorry to do this over the phone, or we try to do it in person. Hey, but your son or daughter has been flown to X hospital. You need to go there right now. And now we have to, we're dealing with that on the scene. I mean, it was just, it wasn't, you know, I I just, my staff is awesome. I mean, I just, what they had to go through these first responders, which we've also talked about. There's that mental health aspect as well. Yeah, I mean, they have is. to witness yeah. these things and see these things. I mean, part of, and then they're expected to just you know go back to work. 
Yeah, no big yeah. deal. Right? Part right. of your job. And then let's go to the next thing. Go- right? Yeah. yeah. And and you know, and now our deputy can't work today and 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 has to take time off. And it's just and you yeah. know, and and they'll get through it. They're they're rock solid, but and we appreciate all of the you know, right now our team knows it's the family needs their your thoughts and prayers, but you know, when we're in we're in a bad spot. Everybody backs the law enforcement and the EMS and the fire. And that's why it's so important when there's a pancake breakfast for firemen, you know, I, I assume it's Camarama coming up or, you know, you had one up there for the fireworks. I mean, yeah. it wasn't for first responders, but it was for a community yeah. event, which backs when you get that kind of community support that helps other things. It's like freedom fest. In, yeah, which in I'll be school. talking about at the very end of the show. We're going to start doing tickets. Okay. Well, I'll just say right now, real quick, we're going to be doing ticket yeah. giveaways starting. So every show in June, we're doing ticket giveaways for every, uh, okay. uh, every Tuesday we're doing ticket giveaways. Yeah. So that was pretty much what I was going to say anyway. So anyway, and, and, uh, yeah, but and it is, then, and that is money is going to help out first responders and law enforcement. Right. I mean, what? So that's all there. Awesome have a good time, spend some money, enjoy some great music. And all that money goes right back into the community. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It is. That should be a sold out show right now. It should be done. If you really support law enforcement, EMS fire, you go after Spooner, the freedom fest. That's what these festivals should be for. That's what this is for the community. I mean, uh, I was, I, follow the sheriff in, in Dane County and they had a brat fest this weekend and they had a hundred nonprofits and he sends all of his deputies down into this brat fest to help with it and work it and make sure it's safe. And all of the money goes to every nonprofit in Dane County. And that's this huge brat festival. I mean, that's what our festival should be for our nonprofits and hats off to the, the, the people in Spooner for nailing this one. They yeah. did it. Awesome. It's going right back into our community and our fire and EMS because a lot of what we learned in Cameron and Barron over the last month is these smaller departments don't have funding for debriefs, for mental health services, for their people when they go through a tragic event like this. We're blessed. The county has money. We set aside money for this. Some of these smaller departments do it don't or don't have the money. The Sheriff's Association, the Chief's Association, and the Deputy Sheriff's Association went into their bank accounts and got $15,000 for Barron and Cameron to do debriefs. And then that money is going to stay in an account for our Wisconsin leader team to do debriefs on this. And so, and so it's the little things that make a big difference. Yeah. That's a little thing. Didn't cost anybody money. Go to the Freedom Music Fest and you're giving back to the community. I mean, that's yeah. So when we do the about. tickets, uh, yeah, you can't. Oh, shoot, I don't know. I, I was going to have that already for yeah. next week's show. We do giveaway. It's just Freedom. Yeah. Fe- uh, we had a big banner on our website, right when yeah. I come. Yeah. So Go to the click on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, look, buy your tickets. And then if you end up winning tickets, yeah. then just give those, or donate those, or, or, or just like go and buy a couple of tickets. And, and then if you if you happen to be one that wins, you know, one of these you know, these ticket giveaways that we're going to start doing next yeah. month, then great. Then you get, you know, take another one or two people, however we decide to do this, uh, with you or donate those to somebody else. But yeah, I mean, that's the whole point is to do that. Right. You know, to actually, you know, don't wait. <laughs> to get a free ticket and hope that you get it. Um, all right, you know, so yeah, I, it is very inexpensive. I mean, and I, I, I know everything costs money to nowadays, and you know, the price whatever. of eggs and milk. And you know, I get it. But this is when somebody says, "What can I do?" Hey, become a sponsor, you- buy some tickets, and just give them away yourself. Just go buy five tickets. I want to support law enforcement or fire and Spooner or wherever it is. And it's for the what? whole region, just right? Yeah, well, yeah, it's not they, just they've offered it to us. We just don't have, I mean, it's a very busy weekend to find volunteers, but they've offered it to us to to come up and help. And we just have a lot going on that weekend. It's going to be difficult, but uh, I want to go up there oh, and Shanny's check on, on their garbage. Shanny yeah, there it is. Shanny's on it. Thank you, Shanny. Um, freemusicfestwi.com. So, yeah. I, I mean, this is, it's I mean, they knocked this one out of the park, and and they're going to give money back to our community. I mean, they got to pay their expenses, and they they've got a lot, but they put on a a great show and have the best garbage around, like we said. <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. So if anybody's watching, I mean, you've never watched the show before. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason that he he uh, Fitzy's um, he he pays attention <laughs> to how garbage is being handled at events. It's a little and that's detail. A, it's, a, it's a thing for him. 
The little things make a big difference. Hey, uh, there was a uh, scrolling up back through. Uh, there was a question, so this is a little off topic, from Jody. It said, not to bring up bad memories, but should Hunter's body can be on Facebook? Think of the family, please. Um, we had talked about it's that not- last week. I didn't know it was on uh, I'm sure it's out there. So, I mean, you can go to the DOJ's thing, and I think it's there, and it's redacted stuff. Uh, I know that when we talked about this last week, we're not posting it on our website or on a Facebook page. Not saying that it isn't necessarily appropriate or inappropriate. There's open record stuff and whatever. I just did, wasn't comfortable with that. I didn't want to post any of that stuff. But do you want to address what Jody had said? I, I, I would have loved to have not not been released. Um, the Department of Justice released that. We did not release it. We didn't share it. We didn't tell people where to go look. We didn't do anything like that. Um, that is a public record. There's some lean some laws in there that maybe could have been in, enacted to stop it. There are exceptions so, to open records there, requests. Right. There are some exceptions, probably not in this case. Um, because there's, yeah, I don't, I don't no, I don't think so. So, mm. so yeah, the DOJ releases it. You see body cam footage across the country being released. This is where, um, you know, things from the George Floyd incident, that's where law enforcement went this way. And now we're probably going to have to swing back because now everybody's like, well, I don't want all that release. Well, you guys want, you know, I'm not saying anybody here, but I'm saying that's how the, the mainstream media went is we got to know everything all the time about everything. And now we're like, well, I don't want to know about everything. So, you know, we've got to be one. somewhat careful. Right. Yeah. And it's no different than we've talked about with, with Katie and St. Croix County. You know, we went away from patting down everybody and putting you up against the car and telling you to put your hands behind your back, even though you weren't arrested yet, because for officer safety standpoint, we kind of got away from that in law enforcement. And I think we need to bring that back. But then people get offended because we violate your rights before we arrest you. And we're not violating your rights. We're just we want to go home at the end of our shift. That's what we're going to go to. So I think. The pendulum always swings. It goes this way. It goes that way. And I think, you know, it's little things that we can do. Um, That's that, right. You know, that can change it. And so, yeah, people don't like that. I agree. I don't like it either. Um, I didn't know it was going to be released until that day. Um, but the DOJ releases it when the when the findings get released by a district attorney's office. DOJ releases their findings, their video, their yeah. whatever they have. So. Well, at the um, end of last week's show, I got a message from someone, maybe it was a text that was watching it and said, uh, I appreciate that you're not posting that information on the website. Right. No joke. I received a, a submission request on our website. People, you know, that's where you can email us and asking how come that we didn't, you know, why didn't you do that? <laughs> what are you covering? I'm like, you just can't win. <laughs> like yeah. half the people yeah, we're are, you know, up. Right. Right. Covering <laughs> it up. It's on the DOJ website. Just go. Look. That's why I did. I'm like, here's the link to it. You can go. I'm just not posting it. I don't think it's appropriate, but yeah. that's just me. And that's just how we. If you don't. I just. You know. I we better. I, not I, I, but, uh, better we're, not. we're gonna get in trouble. Let's talk keep about, talking about this. I got a couple little things to talk about. Please. Um, what else do you want to talk about? Oh, oh just real uh, quick. I had only two other things written out underneath our press releases and article segment. Um, I had an insider story. I think it was just yesterday, so it has to do with Barron County. The headline was, Jury Returns Verdict for Man Charged with Multiple Sex Crimes Against Children. Uh, kind of the, this was a Michael Dixon, multiple sex crimes against children under the age of 13. Uh, complaint was filed. This was an investigation by the Turtle Lake Police Department, so it wasn't specifically uh, your office. Uh, the jurors, uh, they only deliberated for like 45 minutes, and they came back, mm-hmm. found him uh, guilty on five counts, uh, including felony, first degree, child sexual assault, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff like the words are just gross even you know i I don't want to say them out loud uh skipping skipping his bond was remanded and he's in your jail right now and he's scheduled for sentencing so they found him guilty right away yep um any anything you want to add to that other well what do you want to say jury nailed it i don't know what do you want me to say that was awesome really Um, this is a success story in my opinion good investigation everyone did that and when they come back in 45 minutes i mean that poor defense attorney I got no shot. Not even a, that's not even enough time to go to the bathroom and pick no, up a jury for me. No, no. I love seeing that because there's sometimes we talk about some of these and it's, right. I don't like this. I don't like this and this. I understand judges have to do blah, blah, blah. But this is one of those that I'm like, all right, now we'll wait to see what the sentencing is going to be in July. And maybe we'll have another conversation 
<laughs> um, but no, yeah, you're hundred percent right. I think there's some mandatory minimums here, so that's good. Yeah. Um, but you got convicted on all five counts. Um, and again, again, some people forget always there's officers and deputies that have to do all these investigations, social workers, um, that have to deal with all of this. And this is why I'm asking for two more cops. This is a complex case that has to get right. And the first time this accident last night has to be, we have to invest the time. We called multiple people in last night to make sure that we did this crash, right? The state patrol had multiple, multiple people there to make sure it gets reconned and everything was all the, we only get one shot at this. You can't just go out there and say, Oh, we made a mistake last night. Let's put the cars back where we found them and do this again, or let's re-interview this kid. You know, you want, you don't want to victimize people twice and you got to answer, you got to ask all the questions. And that's why we invest time in this. And, and that's why I love doing the show because we get to talk about that, that no one wants to talk about. I don't want to talk about interviewing a child that was just sexually oh. assaulted. That sucks. But that's what our deputies and officers are doing. I don't want to say on a daily basis, but more times than they should be. And that's where we hope judges you know, put these people in prison. That's what prison's for, for cases like this. I'm pretty sure there's mandatory minimums on this one. Yeah. So he'll be going to prison. He, he can't get out. His bond was remanded. He went right to court or right to jail. Um, that's how it should have happened. And that's how it should. And happen. I don't know if it's like, um, like a OWI where if someone gets arrested for an OWI, uh, or well, in Wisconsin, just get out. Traffic violation, you basically, <laughs> right? You just get to take it. Um, but I've heard that it's probably not your first time doing it. Typically, that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's more than likely not. You just happen to get caught this time, and I don't know if that's. I don't think it would be nearly as much. But when I see these, uh, someone doing these, you know, horrible things, the children, I wonder how many else that person, or not specifically this person, but those people have victimized. Right. that never came forward and talked about. So that always makes me feel even better. So yeah, this may be the one that is actually uh, came forward and there was the, the, the interviews and the forensic stuff, all this, but I wonder if there's more. Right. So it, it I'm depends. just saying, you know, I feel like there's lot. more to all of these stories. Yeah. I would, I would probably disagree with that. Okay. I, I've done a lot of See, sexual I, that's just me. I don't know if there's more, but I like to think that there is. In terms of uh, justice being served for a person. You're, you're right, though. You're right on because it's not my – this is my first time ever drinking and driving and I got caught. You know, what are you – never, mm. not, never have. Right. Yeah. And I don't think it's only nearly that hot. Right. <laughs> two beers, that's right. Beers. When you and Dad were doing the sheriff's off. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I think in sexual assaults, I, I think it's probably a more – Okay. You know, devious thing. And so I think there's a lot more thought goes into it in some cases. I'm not well, saying good. in some cases. In That's some good. cases there's there's not, but I think I don't know. I, I would probably somebody would probably argue that with me, but uh I'd probably either way. Glad the person that. glad the jury found him guilty. Right. right. Um we so, also real quick had uh we did Canines joined the ranks was a headline, Canines joined the ranks of Baron Polk and Sawyer County Sheriff's offices, and by the way, someone had messaged us and said, and also Rice Lake had one, but we were just doing it on the three sheriff's offices. And I don't know how many police municipalities that we have in our six counties, but I'm like, I'm not going to go through everybody's thing and contact everyone to find. So I apologize that Rice Lakes wasn't on there. It wasn't on purpose to admit it other than I just wanted to do the three sheriff's offices that I knew did it. Well, uh, and we contacted you. I mean, uh, you know, Brent Walk went re reached yeah, out Brent, to you. Yeah, he was the one I who actually suggested this. Sheriff Walk had called and said, hey, we had one finished. I believe, you know, you were there and uh, Doug Rotek was there. So, you know, you may want to get their information and then just do a story. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea, Brent. Thank you. So that's how this all started. So right. tell us about, he, the, uh, about it for your canine and your deputy. Yeah. Well, Sergeant or Ryan Hallbeck is our canine handler and uh, canine Jasper is our new canine he graduated from uh, 14 week training, so he's ready to hit the road. Actually, tomorrow he starts on the road, um, so he'll be out there. He's an 18 month old Belgian Malinois German Shepherd mix. He's from Poland. Um, he was, he's used for narcotics, search and rescue, um, criminal apprehension, and PR. Um, and they do and it PR? all. Uh, and PR, public relations. Yeah. We use dogs for public relations because everybody likes a dog. Oh, okay. I thought you're, I'm like, he can't write press release. Like, what do you? 
really in sense. my head i'm like this doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah, right. no and so um canine jasper hits the ground um and we have canine coda so we have two canines available you know uh sheriff walk and sheriff rotec also had one uh chief rule also had somebody trained so now we've got We've got two dogs back in Barron County, three dogs. We've got R2 plus Rice Lake. Turtle Lake has a drug detection dog only. There's only does drugs. Um, so we're working on um, uh, Canine Coda will actually retire at the end, before the end of this year, and we're, we're going to replace that uh, Canine Coda with another canine uh, very shortly. We're working on that right now. So canines are a big tool, uh, another tool in our tool belt that we like to put in our tool belts, and they are, you know, they're the ones that we send in, so we don't have to send an officer. No kidding. That. I would literally be more scared of a dog rushing in the house than a, a cop with a gun. Or maybe not. I don't know. No, actually, no, seriously. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd actually be a little be. bit more scared of a dog. Uh, right. that's, that's weird that way. but And it's so crazy that when they get trained, like they can be the nicest, kindest, sweetest animals. Like just, oh, big puppies. But they can also be very tac uh, tactical, right. <laughs> which right. is weird how they can just turn that on and off. It's so bizarre. Well, and people think they can hide from a cop, which they probably can. I'm probably not a good searcher, but they can never get away from a dog. So yeah. I'm, not, can, I'm, not a, I'm not winning at hide and seek. Yeah, yeah. You should have the dog, the dog chase dog. all the bad guys going forward. Exactly. You should have so, one in the back of your so, vehicle. But, um, you know, Deputy Hallbeck did a, a great job. I mean, you know, hats off to his family that had to deal with him being gone for 14 weeks. Um, over right. in St. Paul, St. Paul uh, uh, Academy. Is oh, where they it stay was. there the whole time. Well, at, he comes home on the weekends. It's a forty-hour oh, sure, sure. oh, okay, training, okay. week, so it's not like he was gone. He came home every weekend. And sometimes it was nights, and so he came home and okay. during the day. But still, but you're gone, right? Yeah, yeah, you're gone. It's so it's tough yeah. uh, on a family. So hats off to him and his family for allowing him to do that. A canine is. You've got to invest a half hour every day of training your dog. It's a lot of work. One position I've never held at the sh in any form of law enforcement. Canine handlers are, you know, they've got to do the most work in the department. So, wow, they do a lot. All right, you said you had a couple things. Donut Dash. So I'm nice. hoping that I know all media all that that will well, advertise this for our Donut Dash. So, oh, I, brother, yeah, I'm sure a local newspaper will pick it up. Oh. <laughs> So, okay. but our do cops and robbers donut dash is coming up, and again, um, here's the shirt. There's, oh, oop. hang on. Oh, don't say, uh, oop. Oh, oh. There we go. There we go. Stop. Don't move. Don't move. Cops and robbers. Oh, there's the shirt. Oh, uh, the back. Oh, nice. Nicely and, and, done. And, and obviously, we put put our uh, um, our logos for six oh eight and six fourteen. That's Hunter and Emily on the back of this shirt. Um, but our our shirt orders, you can order just a shirt. You're not a runner. You're not a walker. Just order a shirt. All this money goes to our shop with the cop. It's tough to talk about Christmas in July, but it's only $25 if you order now. Get your orders in right now. It's uh -huh. on our where? Facebook where? Page. On your our face Facebook page. If yeah, I run you, this you, thing, I, I, I won't charge you. I'll run all this information for free. Do I get a, uh, uh, in exchange, do I get a free shirt? Sure. I can get you a I'll shirt. I'll just pay for it because it's for a good cause. It's fine. No, no, I want to. Uh, and so, um, yeah. So, and you get free admission to the Saturday of the fair. The fair donates a free admission to the fair on Saturday. But um, people do it just to help shop with the cops. Yeah. So, um, we get donuts yeah. in the middle of the race. You get donuts at the end of the race. Um, marketplace donuts are good, and they're the best. And marketplace donates the donuts to us. So. Uh, that's put on by our law enforcement foundation, but it's just a great cause. Saturday morning of the fair, the race is around the lake. It's a great course. It's just fun. Uh, come out, yeah. get a great T-shirt. Dirk's gonna order one. No kidding. Uh, yeah, I will Dirk's still run order. that for you for free. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah, and but I will actually pay for one because again, it's come on. That's that's. It's. It, it, I know it, it's that it, time it, of year where everybody wants a little bit of money for everything or for something, yeah, and you know, pick it. whatever you want. That's fine. And if this right. isn't your jam and it's something else, and you just yeah. must clearly hate cops or uh, <laughs> kids because that's what this is for. If you, if you hate kids and you hate Christmas, then you know it's no big deal. Uh, give some twenty dollars to some other you know fundraiser. Yeah. Just think of this. Now you're wearing your shirt. You're doing like ten over. You get pulled over. You're like, oh, I support. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think pragmatically now. Come on, yeah, this could benefit on. you. <laughs> well, I'm just uh, buying a shirt, Channy. I'm not going. 
that required me well, to go outside. You can walk it. <laughs> no, thank you. It's only three. It's only five k. That's only three miles. I don't know what that is. Oh, three miles. That's three miles. I'm not walking three miles. Are you kidding? You know how long that well, would take me. We just come and eat a donut with me in the morning, then. All right, we I can do that. that <laughs> yeah, I can take some pictures or something. Oh, there you go. We can do a live show. No, we can't. I'm too busy. So, okay. <laughs> all right. That's um. I think all I have. Well, uh, going okay. back, you had already mentioned about uh, the oh, pig yeah. roast. Which, by the way, we're going to call it next year. I, I thought after the fact, we need okay. to start calling this Porkapalooza. That's what we're going to start calling it. Um, but yeah, we had the headline up yesterday. Community supports so community support soars at Shell Lake Pig Roast funds third of July fireworks spectacles. So it was a pig roast of uh, spit fire pig something i don't know what it's called and that was actually donated by uh sawyer creek cattle company which <laughs> well, sorry. It must be sawyer creek cattle and pig company now i don't know but they donated that um and then like the tent uh, was the first time they had this huge uh, tent somebody yeah, donated that for it to be used for for that day and it was supposed to be from eleven thirty to 2 30 and by one o'clock it was all gone. It was insane. Oh, An hour and a half. Now, speaking of just communities coming together and doing things, it's Shell Lake. Right, it's small yeah. town, little Shell Lake, and they raised two thousand dollars in an hour and a half. That's right. insane. Yeah. And it all goes to help keep the fireworks show free and the street dance yeah. free and bring people in so the community can all come together and have a wonderful Fourth of July weekend. Right. And that's Shell Lake. I mean, Shell Lake. Yeah. Two thousand dollars in an hour and a half. That's huge fireworks. What? You know, we always go. We drive yep. from Rice Lake to go to Shell Lake Fireworks because it's always on the third and there's nothing going on. It's great. And now we got to go to Spooner on the on Freedom Music Fest and then Shell Lake. And that's, oh, yeah. that's great. Oh, oh then we have our, our golf outing. When is that anyway? Yeah. Is that July or August? August. 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 Okay. I better get to the driving range. Yeah, I better get my clubs. I out. haven't yeah. hit a ball since last the the last year's Spooner Health Golf That's, Outing. I'm gonna, did it. I, I'm gonna try to get out and play maybe this weekend. I doubt it. I'll yeah. get out. It don't matter. I can say I want to golf all day long. I'm not gonna. Uh, I know. Me either. <laughs> Why even just say it? So, all right. So, so Dirk, our official weatherman, um, says summer is here. The week warm and hot and humid temps, 85 to 90. Nice. Showers and thunders are possible Ooh. in the morning and afternoon and evening hours all week long. Still plenty of sunshine as well. Hey, that's actually great. Right. If we can get some yeah. rain in the mornings and beautiful afternoons, fantastic. Out there. Yeah, I think it's we're dry. supposed to get rain shortly, at least here. I think yeah, even in your well, area. It's dark here, so, but it's warm. Everybody likes it. Great weekend. Um, congratulations. Somebody said all the graduates. Yeah, Chase graduated this weekend. Congratulations. Very safe weekend for graduates, so... That's a big plus. Um, not real safe. Well, was it was safe on the waters, but we had over 20 violations that we cited people for over the weekend. I got an OWI on the lake this weekend. Nice. Uh, a couple more OWIs as I'm reading the jail roster right now. Uh, a few OWIs this weekend, so we've got to keep alcohol out of the mix. Summer's here. We're going to hit it hard. We've got I got two emails while I'm sitting here about speeding complaints, so slow down, everybody. We're going to hit the speeding uh, pretty hard this week as long as we don't get uh, any more crashes. So, um, thoughts and prayers to all the families again. Thoughts and prayers to all of our Man. first responders. You guys are rock stars, um, and let's go. Let's go support the Freedom Music Fest, and that'll all go back to our first responders. So. Yeah, and we'll be starting. Uh, go there, get some tickets, and if you win some giveaways, which will be starting next week, uh, every Tuesday on all of our shows in June, we'll be doing some ticket giveaways. We'll probably, you know, we should get Amy Greenfield on one of these shows for like, you know, that five good minutes, right? Have her come right. on for a little bit and just kind of, you know, say a little bit more. Uh, yeah. And dad, if you're still watching, show's almost finished. You can come up. He's coming up to get something uh, okay. out of the garage. And I said, well, don't yeah. come between 8, 30, 9, 15. I'm doing a show. So he could come in right now and we could get him in five good minutes with your dad. Five good minutes with dad. <laughs> oh, we totally should. That'd be awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Fitzy. And thanks for everyone. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. For Van Conner, Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald, I'm Ben Dryden, and you've been watching Positive Tuesday with Ben and Fitzy, presented by Professional Exteriors and Interiors. With 20 years' experience, his locally owned and operated business provides quality work both on the inside and on the outside of your home or business. So give him a call today, 715-520-2271. Uh, what's this now? Our wedding? On Ju uh, Whose wedding? Uh, obviously, Jody's getting married. Well, Congratulations. Hey, that's my anniversary. I can take my wife out for a free, for free. <laughs> <laughs>
That's my anniversary. That's great. <laughs> Take her out for a free meal at her wedding. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. We'll see everyone back uh, next week. So till then, thanks for watching. And as always, have a blessed day.